dream catcher. <laughs> My name is Jessica Holyfield. I'm a professional dancer, professional dance choreographer, and dance educator based out of the Southeast of the United States. And we're taking a look at Dreamcatcher. We're finally here. I mean, Minx was super, it was super enjoyable to go through Minx, but I'm very excited to be starting Dreamcatcher today. This is going to be dance practice one. I do know they have a couple dance practices as a part of their pre-debut before they actually make their debut, very similar to XG. So I am pretty pumped about this. Um, I don't think we have anything else to say, except let's get started. Nice. You already seen elevation of syncopation and polyrhythms, baby. Let's go. Skinny jeans for me. Love it. Love it. Do you see we're already seeing a huge growth in using our rock and our balance? Kind of mentioned that in their last video they did. I think it was to Rhythm Ta. It is very addicting, this kind of choreo. The choreo is kind of like a, a body worm. Now, you know, like earworms for songs? Uh, these are like, I don't know. It's a weird thing for me to say, but I really like this. Nice. pre-debut so that's kind of fun um initial thoughts that made me so 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 excited we already see growth in the areas of the rock and the bounce also their syncopation is so captivating very good job on the commitment from all the girls i do know we have two more that are added to this because i knew dreamcatcher is seven and we have with minx they were five so i did hear a lot of i i did hear a lot about that which is really fun um and like i said my main goal for my marathons is to know at least half the members. So I would say for Dreamcatcher, my goal is to know at least four of them by the end of the marathon. So um, we're gonna go from the top and kind of just analyze our way through. I'll probably not start making guesses until they actually debut debut. We will see though. From the tippy top here, I love the little angry bird there. Notice how they're sitting. They start with the chest, then they sit in that hip. Then they bring it back up. Then they syncopate it by bringing up this, um, bringing up their foot to drop it. it goes doom, doom, boom, 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 boom. So they're adding with that double. They're using the leg to help carry that while keeping the groove in place. And they switch with the with the shoulders. I just really like the isolated intention behind the movement. It's really enjoyable. I am noticing that some of our ladies are more full in their energy compared to some of our other ladies. Now, is that a bad thing? Not quite. It can affect, depending on choreography, it looks totally fine here. It's not quite taking away from the overall aesthetic because a lot of the accents or what makes this routine captivating comes from the upper body more so than the lower body. Lower body just presents more energy for the upper body. So I would say for her, she, because she's not using as much energy in her legs, maybe she doesn't, she doesn't really come across as powerful nor is she using her back and you can tell that because she's drooping her arms down she's not using those lats to lift those arms up like what we're seeing from our front dancer so that my overall note bringing it through nice energy here one two and three now we're going the other way honestly this feels like a drill this is a really great choreo if you wanted to learn how to understand how to uh, isolate your shoulders while still trying to maintain some sense of rock and bounce. This would honestly be a great choreography to learn for that exact reason I said. Of course, we have some very baby, you know, some people lifting the leg a little bit earlier than others, things like that, but that's nothing, anything that's gonna 
gonna kill the routine. Um, I did notice my uh, individual over here. I do feel like she struggles in slightly different ways as with the first dancer that I pointed out. Um, but it's near the tail end. It could be because she was she doesn't have as much room as everybody else. Could be that. But the energy here is really nice. Switching it over. I know with our front individual she um, didn't quite use her leverage of her weight to get herself over to the other side like everybody else so she stuck out a little bit and most cases if you're featured at that time I'm typically more forgiving because you're singing and it is important that you want to be able to make those modifications and concessions so you are successful both in dancing and in singing but because this is just a dance performance I will make a note of that and I will say just be more mindful of not sticking out in these energies right here you know but to each their own. It was very, very subtle. So not, nothing crazy to be like, ooh, that was bad. This was not bad at all. This was wonderful. Switching it through that pull. Doom, 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 doom. Really like that. Doing a little envelope to bring it back. Really nice. They have this suave cleanliness about it. And it's very nice to see with the switches. Boom. Dee, 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 dee. And they bring it up. Bring it through. Boom. Boom. With the slide. Super nice to see. Honestly, dun 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 dun. Very nice. They have to use the core and make sure they rotate the whole body, not just the torso, leaving the head behind or um, just moving the chest without torso. So it's very good. We could definitely see them use their core, mm, but we do notice with some of them, they're not quite fully lengthening their leg out. So that would be my four right here, doing a pretty good job of that. She's doing it somewhat, but uh, we notice a quite a big bend on some of their their legs it could just be over time they become more aware of how to shift their weight and how to utilize these the energy like where the energy comes from as they move dipping it down love this some people put their hand up a little prematurely in this section nothing crazy she has her own little moment that's totally fine i'm assuming this is our leader right here if you can tell me her name i know somebody commented her name before but um they're all wearing very similar things and their hair at this point in time are all pretty similar and this is not a clear shot at all of their faces so I can't it's a lot harder to learn their names whenever I don't see their faces but I try to go off of movement quality so I would say my dancer that we noticed the most I'm assuming she's our leader so just let me know who she is I have a feeling I guess my gut would be like is she the same one who um, was in like that blue flannel and I think the Urishiba way that's what my gut's telling me. You let me know if I'm right. If I'm wrong, my apologies. Just let me know uh, who who I need to be looking for for art leader. Now, noticing here, you can tell there's this is a really great example of seeing the difference between using your back and using your arms. So when you see this here, she's using her upper back, which is very important. I always tell people um, your lumbar, which is your lower part of your back, is meant for stability, not mobility. Mobility comes from the thoracic, which is the upper part of the back. And notice that she has so much power. Power and energy behind her arms here hers feels very placed because she's isolating the energy in her shoulders and she's kind of sitting her weight into her lower and crunching her lower back a little bit more which is causing this extra little hinge motion from her you can also tell based on the weight that she's putting both of her like placement of her weight in the back of her feet which could cause her to want to lean back more here it is equally distributed in the mid part of the foot so that's that's like a really this is honestly a freaking great example of ideal and then, oh look, we're celebrating because we're in Dreamcatcher. Oh man, bless the balloons. Um, uh, this is a really good example of like unrefined and refined. You know, I think both are totally fine. Remember, we're at debut right now or pre-debut for Dreamcatcher. There's a lot of grace given here, hence why I do marathons because it's just it's just really nice. I know we're gonna see some really captivating performances and we're gonna see a lot of growth from everybody. So. I understand that they are not this way now. I'm very much aware, but we do see that there is a difference between how they're executing it, and I'm looking forward to seeing that get modified and adjusted over time. Diving it down, and notice she was also isolating the hips, and she was swaying because she's not quite probably understanding the isolations or sway shifts to make that isolation more known in that type of choreography. Dripping it down, notice she goes straight side, she goes front, Good choice. They're probably just doing their own thing, which is exactly what that looks like. They come down, one comes up, one goes down. Love it. Great uses of levels. 
right here. So I was noticing my dancer right here. This is when I, I, I caught her. Her hinge of her hips, how she brought them to the back did feel a little bit stifled compared to a lot of uh, others that were doing it as well. It just feels a bit more muted. It could be because she's right by this wall. We'll chalk it up to that. I love the throws and then they bring it up. Boom. You can even tell that all of them are trying to hit it in the exact same way or like hit their energy in the same way because of their hair. I talk about that a lot with the boy groups because their fringe really gives it away when they do vibrations or reverbs. But here, their hits, like they are really trying to engage and use um, their explosion of energy in certain sections and their dynamics and staccato. And you can tell because of their hair that you can see that they're all pretty much on the same page. You notice that? Yeah, they slide in. I love that boom slide crossover. One of them didn't cross over quite as far. So that'd be my little note for her there. Picking it up. Honestly, it's really fun. This does have some Steve Martin. A lot of Steve Martin influence, but with Steve Martin, it could be because of what they're wearing. We got to chalk it up to that too. In skinny jeans and a long sleeve tops. I mean, it's all super, super cute. And then some of us are in shorts. This groove right here, when you have a groove on the torso, it's going to have a, it's, you're going to ride in the pocket of the tracks. This is a funk track. And with riding in the pocket, it does not mean dancing on beat. It means dancing on the sounds before they disappear. So you notice the timing is going to be a little different. I've talked about this before, but I try to be an advocate for, for properly like showcasing what the pocket means because there is miseducation out there about it. And so I'm trying to do my due diligence to kind of help correct it in some way, shape or form. This verb is just not mine. It is from Castro from New York. He is a popping educator in New York. So it comes from him and he, is, he lives and breathes the funk style um, significantly more often than I do, but I am still very much an admirer and a student of the craft. So please keep that in mind. So being in the pocket, like I've said, if you use um, I've used this analogy before, but I'll use it again just in case it's your first video with me. Mm, whenever you see this kind of swoop of energy, this would be like your whole sound, right? A lot of people will tell you, okay, I want you to dance on beat, which is right in the center of the sound, right? Some cases that's fine, but in funk tracks, that is not what you want. You want to be in the pocket. And being in the pocket in the music, let's say from a musician standpoint, is there's this pulse or this groove that takes place with the band. And it's not quite on tempo. It kind of feels delayed, but not delayed, right? And that goes into right before the sound disappears. So if this is your, let me see if I'm mirrored. This is your beginning. This is, forgive my, forgive the dog. Um, this is your beginning and this is your end. You want it to be right before the sound goes bye-bye, right before it disappears. That's where you want your energy to hit or you want your movement to hit. That is called being in the pocket of the music. That means you're within the music. And, also, and you could even challenge that with, like in a good way, of talking through, you know, how sound travels between spectators to those who are performing, you know, feedback speakers. There's like a whole acoustic analysis you could do about it too. So all that to say with the pocket, you don't want it to hit right on the beat. You go in a boom, 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 boom. It kind of has this delay, you know, and that's what, and that's what gives it its funk, you know? So, and that would apply to popping, to locking, to breaking, um, anything that carries funk, like a funk style. It would be that. So that's something that we're kind of missing here is the usage of being in the pocket. But we do see major progress from what we've seen before from them of that exact thing. So I love the step turn. Really nice digging it down. I love that doom, doom, doom. Notice we didn't quite use any groove. We did push our bodies forward, but we didn't do anything to help build the energy so it can travel back to the legs, which is totally fine. Go down and back. Go and pull. Doom, 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 doom. Lifting, jumping. Honestly, I think very clean. I think synchronicity has not been lost once. Really nice to see from them. Hey, so we're repeating the choreo, which is really nice. And then one of us just um, didn't quite use their hips as much in this second half of the choreo. Diving, uh, diving down. It is important to know when to separate the arms, to drop them by the knees, to bring them right back up. So that was just a little baby, baby thing to be mindful. Honestly, when people have their hands on their hips, whenever they have them placed in front of you or in their hips, it does read a little differently, but they did a good job of clarifying that here. All, all the girls that have a top where they can actually move, it, you could tell that they're on the much cleaner page than those who don't quite have that same type of top. And that's where whenever you work together and you wear something similar with each other, it makes sense um, how that kind of overlap will take place. <clears throat> One of them was just slightly delayed. Notice that she's keeping her weight center. 
versus um, actually transferring it over because you can tell her weight's equally distributed, but everybody else, their knees are what's really help, helping compensate for the weight shifts with the hips. So that would be my in general note. She's kind of being more reserved. Once again, could chalk it out to the fact she's right next to the wall. Everybody gets to do their own thing. I love the dropping down with the hair on the side. Super fun. Body roll. Boom. This was fun. I love the bleed through right here. Mm, but notice near that tail end of this, not, not everybody was doing the same range of the chest and that's why it started to look a little off. Everybody was doing the same move, but not everybody was executing it in the same diagonals or places that would be beneficial or helpful to keeping the synchronicity in check. And that can stem from some are choosing to go straight side, some are choosing to go more diagonal. Ooh, my voice, bless it. <clears throat> And then some are choosing to go more um, using the kinesphere, so actually using the space around them to hit this. And others are choosing to keep their body still and just isolating it internally. Those details all make a difference in how the group executes it collectively. So that would be my in general note. Going to the front. This was nice to see the step touches. Step touch, step touch, doom, doom, doom. And it's all slightly varied, meaning that there's variations within all the basic steps. So they're doing basics, but the basics are done where they're integrating subtle polyrhythms, which makes it very tasteful and addicting, you know? And I think that's a really fun avenue for them to do. Spacing is definitely really nice. I love the branch off here to go their own little moment. Super cute. And they finish. I love it. What a great start for me in Dreamcatcher, and it makes me very much look forward to when we dive into the debut. Ooh, I may just keep reacting until I get to the debut. I feel like we're about, I know we're about three days into, into the, to the marathon month, and I do have time, but I'm just impatient, so we'll see. But I really enjoyed this from them. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more Dreamcatcher or be a part of a marathon in real time, you can head on over to Patreon to take a look to see what I'm actively marathoning because every month it does change. Um, so it is very fun that I get to do this with Dreamcatcher and that I get to have so many people already on board with wanting to explore this group with me in this context. And because I technically haven't gone to their discography yet, I am waiting. It feels like the drop is about to drop, you know? And um, so I just definitely can't wait to see what we have in store here. Once again, I am Jess, and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye!